Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. What's going on, everybody? Episode number 40 of the Halo Outreach Podcast, the news podcast that keeps you updated with everything going on in Halo. Today, as always, we're joined with our lovely co-host, the Patman Gaming. Why don't you say hola? Hola, que pasa, amigos? <laughs> and today, we're bringing you some awesome information, as we always do. Today, we're going to be talking about the May blog update. It's going to be the big, hefty chunk of this episode today, guys. A lot of information to go over that, you know, entailing some Halo 3 flighting information, uh, and just current development of MCC with some new features coming in that have been recently reprioritized, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the HDS Pro Series for, had their first pro tournament uh, last weekend. So I'm really excited about that. We talked about that for a bit as well and how the whole process went for the first online tournament. Uh, we had the Halo, Halo Infinite art book be announced. We got some playlist updates as well. And so we're going to get right into this, guys, for everybody. But first of all, before we do anything, Pat, how are you doing? How have you been since last week's episode? This week's been rough for... About everybody in our country, uh, everybody in the world, uh, you know, this, we're not alone in this, in the U.S., but um, I just had the energy zapped out of me, man. I know you're almost on feeling the similar way. You got a lot going on, too. It's just been exhausting, uh, sad, heartbreaking to just see my Twitter feed just constantly with, you know, negative stuff and, and, and people hurting, and uh, it's... We're, our country's not going into it's not trending upwards we should say it's uh <laughs> this is pretty bad and on top of corona um 2020 sucked man yeah it's and been hopefully uh, it gets better hopefully yeah. i mean i can only yeah. i mean i guess it could get worse but i feel like it's it's going to get it better <laughs> i mean corona is still out there and yeah. social distancing seemed to have gone out the window with all these <laughs> protests people are standing right next to each other mm. um you know people are you know right on top of each other there's a virus a pandemic going on it's not just a virus it's a pandemic it's easily um transferred to other people and there's supposed to be a second wave of corona later in the year you know that could happen um it's just gonna you know after obviously right now what's important is you know what's going on with racism in our country and all around the world, uh, but mostly in the U S um, that, you know, something that shouldn't be happening in a country like the United States, a, a land of the free, the mixing, you know, a mixing pot of a bunch of different eth ethnicities, but it's the harsh reality. Um, we got to stop ignoring it, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens after this all dies down. So what happens with the coronavirus and see how that's affected from all this. So mm. yeah. Um, besides that, you know, playing in video Besides games that. here and there. Besides that, just Besides, like, trying to play country, video games. A country at unrest, there. cities burning, but other yeah. than that, though. Our president is, you know, <laughs> Something else. I don't else. know what I could say about the president <laughs> without a FBI coming for me. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, like, as I, like you are mentioning, too, about kind of, like, having a lot of energy zapped out of you. I've been kind of feeling the same. I mean, we had, we had some looters, like, happening, like, literally, like, walking distance from my apartment. And like there was a shooting like a five minute drive away from me as well, and so like there was like one that my fiance were up to like five o'clock in the morning, you know, just with like mace and a taser by our bedside, <laughs> making yeah. sure like no one comes for us. You know, yeah. it's uh, it was freaky, but luckily no one did. I didn't think anybody would because we we're like in an apartment complex, but like I don't know, people are crazy, man. Too safe. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, it's uh. Hopefully, so I just hope something good comes out of this whole thing, you know? Yeah. I think I was mentioning to you earlier that it could be a little bit trickier trying to get around, trying to fix things this time around when it comes to, like, civil, you know, human rights and stuff like that, compared to, like, what happened in the 60s. That was a little more clear-cut, where, like, but I feel like in this one, this is, like, a fundamental change to, like, policing and accountability and just, like, the structure of, like, governments even. And it's, it's a lot. And yeah. not a single, I don't think like a single bill is going to change things and make it for the better. No. A lot of things got to change. No, it's got to be a systematic change from mm -hmm. the ground up. 
um but yeah like yeah, it could take a while so having all that going on yeah it just kind of like again zapped the energy a lot of me for like creating content you know especially also having some sleepless nights and uh so but i kind of like i had a stream the other night it felt good kind of like okay yeah i feel like be back a little bit normal normal c and uh ready to get back into the the content grind back and talking about some halo having some fun uh while also still you know not forgetting all the stuff that's happening on the still but uh anyways you want to kind of maybe jump over into the uh the blog update here kind of scroll through we'll just kind of scroll through that and see uh what we got in store for that whole thing yeah so we had the basically obviously we always have at the end of the month a monthly blog detailing what's going on with mcc and everything you know that's been happening during the month you know update on all the features that are could be coming and things like that so um this was quite the big bite-sized chunk of of a blog update it was huge uh most of it was taken up by a very in my opinion confusing um confusing section that was about called the life of a bug which went into great detail which i i do appreciate the great detail of it just to me and maybe the average person it might be a little bit confusing um and could be a lot of fluff but it's nice to see the process at 343 as far as bug fixing they even go into details of what happened with the halo 2 classic uh launch on pc as well as the halo 3 cursed halo 3 um launch uh when that when that happened when the new update went live how that broke halo 3 on the xbox one so they even went into the details of the coding and all that stuff what what they had to change to fix it and why that happened so that was really cool to see uh, but the biggest thing is that I would say that we take away from this blog update was that Halo 3 flighting is still on track to be during the first half of the month of June. Um, they even they actually mentioned first half of the month at what point at one point in the blog post, but then in another one they say it's um, going to be in the first three weeks. That's what they're hoping to get out the flight. Um, as far as content, we have a lot of stuff um, customization, updated customization, which is huge because we even seen screenshots of spartans with mixed armor sets so the mm -hmm. old armor sets um you know like the free uh hang on sorry I forgot to... this is epic sorry notification I... notification I yep i kind of forgot about that one oh, uh gone. we had a resub though so thank you very much for the subscription to the channel <laughs> i gotta turn that off right now sorry never, never fails never fails <laughs> i do thank you very much for the two months okay back to what you're talking about though <laughs> yes so customization uh instead of like the preset um you know armor sets and you could actually customize head shoulders torso like you could in the old halo 3 um and as far as we know none of that will be locked up again so if you have mcc already or when you buy mcc that will all be there waiting for you but you can mix recon with mark 5 you know whatever you want to do uh put the katana on your back but still not having to have the um hayabusa arm plates or whatever you want so mm. that's really cool that's a cool thing forge is also coming in this flight for pc with some added stuff it looks like the elephant anti-air wraiths things like that are going to be added into um which i heard from somebody i this is not confirmed or anything but a friend of mine who worked on uh, the mythic maps for uh, halo 5 mythic arena said that that Thorge update is going to be coming by the time the launch of Halo 3 comes out. So, mm -hmm. you know, that means we'll get a whole bunch of stuff for Forge, including Halo Reach Forge, and um, those those huge, that huge update that showed all those, remember those screenshots we saw of all the different things you could play around with in Forge, whether it be for, uh, Sabres, uh, I think Phantoms, things like that were in there. So now we have the Elephant and Anti-Air Race for Halo 3 being able to be thrown in there, which is really cool. Um, theater will be in the in the flight uh, and the complete challenge system probably the thing i'm single most uh, excited for is that challenge system we have a little bit of a taste of it in mcc now but you'll actually get a challenge hub screen where you can check the progress of your challenges there'll be more than just campaign challenges there'll be multiplayer campaign um, you know weekly stuff seasonal stuff and with rewards that aren't just xp based so that's going to be really cool um, and that will be also in this flight and presumably with the release of Halo 3 after the flight. Uh, the campaign, we got a bunch of campaign levels, um, CR117, the Storm, Arc, the Covenant, and Halo, all available single player, co-op, and uh, all the difficulty levels as usual. 
we'll have our usual multiplayer options, a suite of stuff, uh, four on four for social, eight player FFA, 12 player infection and big team. Competitive will be Halo 3 Team Hardcore 4-on-4, four four, Halo 3 Team Slayer 4-on-4, four four, and Doubles. As far as multiplayer maps, we got Construct, Guardian, Last Resort, Narrows, Sand Trap, The Pit, Valhalla, Foundry, Standoff, Avalanche, Sandbox, and Heretic. So, a lot of stuff coming in, these, stuff. Uh, in these flights. Yeah, This is probably the and... most jam-packed, content-rich flight we'll have. It kind of tells yeah. you how... I think they're probably confident how complete this game is right now. Yeah, which me and you have talked about this before. <laughs> we'll say it again. <laughs> Halo 3 was the most complete Halo game. Uh, yeah. The most complete package. It, still to this day, one of the most complete packages in the history of gaming. Great campaign, great multiplayer, great forge, custom games, all that stuff. Uh, customization, it was all there. Um, uh, Pat, did you just uh, with, agree that Halo 3 has great multiplayer? Yeah, it has great multiplayer. <laughs> Halo, all Halo games have great multiplayer, in my opinion. They're, they're better than most other games. <laughs> just some Halo games are better than others, and some are more overrated. <laughs> but, you know, there's a. Uh, you know, it's it, it has to go right. This flight has to go great. This launch has to be almost perfect. Um, mm. Nothing like the Halo 2 launch. Not even the CE launch, which, in my opinion, wasn't that bad, except for, obviously, the glaring, uh, you know, the spread of the Magnum. Um, it has to be the best launch that MCC has ever gotten, okay? Um, and it's the most popular Halo. It's the pinnacle of the series, and people have been waiting. They've never been able to play this on PC. Hey, uh, Halo Online made Halo 3 popular, so... Um, maybe those El Dorito guys that got hired at 3 for 3 are really helping make sure that this is goes as smoothly as possible. But we all know this is most definitely the final straw. Yeah. Um, everybody's looking forward to Halo 3 on PC. So. And, and also they mentioned on Reddit with uh, Farns mentioned about how they have the interpolation working for Halo 3. So where right. playing with unlimited frames will actually play like unlimited frames. So right. if you guys play on PC with unlimited frames for Halo CE and Halo 2 Classic, it's buttery smooth. Like, it looks great playing on limited frames. But if you're like on Reach or H2A, uh, it's pretty choppy on the frames, even if you're getting like 120. Uh, yeah. I've, I've noticed a lot of choppiness mm. even lately, especially with H2A. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, I pretty much yeah. just lock it right at 60, which is a shame. Yeah. But, you know, at yeah, least I'm sucks. playing it on PC. That's kind of more like, at least you can hit 60 just fine. You know, though, if you're a true PC experience, you'd want to get over 60. But, uh, right. you know, the match or monitor, whatever your monitor refresh rate is. But, uh, yeah, it's still, like, 60 is still good. You know, that's kind of the gold standard, really. As long as you're in 60 mm. frames. Uh, we also had, like, uh, some pretty great developments when it comes to uh, things that are now actively in Features. development and things that are yeah. in design right now for the MCC as a whole. Uh, yep. Switch over to this one right here. Uh, so we have actively in development. Uh, we have like double keybinds, which obviously for a lot of people can be super beneficial. I don't really bother with double keybinds a whole lot, but I know a lot of people really want it. Uh, adjustable view models for your weapons, so you don't take up like half your screen. Uh, Steam account linking, super nice. Because I still find trying to invite people to a match can be kind of confusing and a bit of a hassle on PC, mm -hmm. especially if you're on different platforms. Uh, in-game FPS cap and adjustments. That's also super nice because obviously, if I don't want your PC to work harder than it needs to, right? Like I don't need 200 frames. I'm trying to get 144 and just stick with that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, customization improvements, as they said, added like I said with Halo 3, bringing that adjustments in. Um, progression system and like I said, the challenge system. Super awesome to see that coming in. Cannot wait to kind of grind out that content a little bit more, which would make me think. You would have to bring in a new season with Halo Three as well. Like I think at this point, most it's people been that have, long enough. yeah, most people that have played the game at least cat to a a consistent casual point with MCC have pretty much hit one tier one hundred. I think I hit that back in like mm -hmm. January. I think it was when I hit yeah, tier one hundred. Still have yet to hit it. I'm at like ninety one or ninety two right now. Yeah. So I'm getting there. Yeah, like I said, I've played MCC way more than you have, and like you're you're pretty mm -hmm. much there. So yeah, I think pretty much sure. most of the people have caught up to that point where we're, we're, we're kind of looking for a new season. 
So it'd be interesting to see what they kind of add for content that way. Uh, if you do, make sure you follow the channels, guys. We'll keep you up to date on that for sure. <laughs> Subscribe, people. <laughs> do it. Uh, but the cool thing here is what they've got in, that's now added to the InDesign section, which is something super important here. Uh, where you know, they've had like additional mod support, chat improvements, uh, you know, additional video settings. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cool stuff here are these four right here are going to be custom they're currently in design which means they're working about how to implement this into the mcc kind of like you know in the drawing board kind of stages of the custom games browser input based matchmaking original server selection and cross play between xbox and pc so they're working on that now there is no timetable when this stuff is done when it's going to be put out but at least now it's off the back burner of going, eh, we'll get to it till we'll get to it. Well, now they've gotten to it. Now they're starting to mm -hmm. work on it, how they're going to implement it into the MCC uh, for the multiple consoles that the MCC runs on and also all the different kind of hardware builds for uh, PC as well. Uh, that's huge. Especially having a custom game browser yeah. and Xbox, PC, crossplay. That's going to be massive. Um, right. Especially, I was like wondering like where this crossplay is gonna be coming in because they mentioned it back during Reach uh, when people were crying about the aim assist, and they're like, "Well, we don't want to change it for crossplay eventually coming in." They're like, "Well, when's the crossplay coming in? Are you just gonna right. let these games die and then add in the crossplay?" You know, right? But um, so it looks like they're working on it right now. Uh, if you had to give a timetable, Pat, what would you feel like you would probably at least see the crossplay being implemented? I'd say three months. Yeah. Three, four months. You think yeah. before Halo uh, 4 comes out on PC? Before, a little bit after. Yeah. Uh, I, I would lean a little bit more towards a little bit after, just considering how long, because this stuff has always been on the table. It's always been in the back burner, mm -hmm. uh, in the backlog, pending further discussions. All this stuff was moved up a tier, basically. Yeah. We have three tiers. We have ones that are actually actively in design, in development, ones that are in design iteration, which Kevin mentioned, and then in the backlog. And this stuff has been in the backlog, like you said, since Reach. They've talked about all this stuff. Um, and now, what well, Reach launched in December, we're in June, six months later, we're now getting it bumped up a tier. The thing is, we're, we don't really have much left in the active development. So I'm thinking they would be able to get to this stuff and really start cranking it out in the next few months. So I would say... Yeah, I would say either in the fall, sometime in the fall, yeah. uh, bef right before, like maybe a two months before Infinite launches, you know, um, I think that stuff would be good. I, I really think it's really important too that input input based matchmaking and cross play come out at the same time. I um, absolutely have to because, be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you cannot have your player base getting further weeded down by input based matchmaking. Um, cross play would alleviate that issue. So. Those two features need to come at the same time. Um, I'd rather see that come out before custom game browsers, um, but custom game browsers is definitely really important as well as as well as uh, region selection. Yeah. Uh, better ways to report players has also been added into there, and that's huge too because the, it's really hard to find a way to report people who are just being stupid and racist or just saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind shit talking. You know me; I'm a shit talker yeah. myself. But <laughs> there's just a certain line you cross, um, and a lot of people do that. So well, it'd be nice to be able to report players. So many people are just lazy with their trash talking online nowadays. They just go bad, you bad trash. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. got you got to get a little yeah. creative with it. If you're gonna talk some trash, you know, make it entertaining. You know, yeah, exactly. These guys, these kids don't know what it was like back in the 360 days of fucking Xbox Live with Halo 3 and like Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, all right? Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, that's, you, that's yeah, if you want to see good trash talk, <laughs> just tune in to me and Kevin playing together and we're just bickering <laughs> back and forth. You know, he's blaming me for deaths, I'm blaming him for deaths. You know, he's stealing my kills, I'm stealing his. You know, it's just, it just, it's a never ending cycle of just toxicity and we love it. <laughs> yeah, feed off of that. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, obviously, like input based matchmaking is going to be needed. I think even if, like, even if there was no issue between aim assist between co like controller and mouse and keyboard, you still need that anyways. Uh, just because there is going to be like some 
advantages and disadvantages between the two uh, input devices that you want to try to have a most, mo as much of an even playing field as possible and having input based matchmaking is going to really help with that i know that call of duty does that with their cross play uh, like i definitely mm -hmm. notice like when i'm playing on xbox i get way more console players and then if i'm playing on pc i get way more pc players normally than i do console players and i think fortnite has a similar implementation as well and uh, so it just it just kind of helps level up the playing field a little bit more less variables and so it, you know it's it's a, it's a messy thing to kind of deal with as well and uh you know especially with how arena has been playing on the mcc on pc that basically if you're like trying to rank up in the 4v4 like hardcore playlists in halo you pretty much have to play with a controller mm -hmm. that's because like I think it's more than just aim assist, like the map sizes, your average distances you come across in battles, player movement, fire rays, bullet magnetism. Like there's so many different variables when it comes to this stuff to make you choose controller or make you choose mouse and keyboard. Uh, and so just like saying change aim assist, it's like it's there's a little bit more behind that, you know. Right. I think it might become, come down to like fundamentally changing the game at some points, which obviously that's all big undertaking right there to try to get that to work out but uh but yeah super awesome to see that happen i would really i don't i don't know how difficult it is to you know code out cross play i wouldn't think it'd be too tricky you know trying to get some no, platforms to talk not. between each other you can imagine that being easier than like you know i don't know like i could i could i could see that being just about as easy as like adding in double key bindings or something but I don't know. Like I yeah, said, we're not game developers. Crossplay is notoriously easy to implement. It's just a matter of we. Um, a lot of developers back in the day when Sony was like, you know, really against crossplay, they're like, we just need the go ahead. It's almost as easy as flipping a switch. Mm. I think the problem has been trying to implement um, skill based ma or not skill based input based matchmaking. Um, that's that's what they're trying to work on first. Like I said, so yeah, to release them both at the same especially, time. Especially since the, to, sorry, go ahead. Let me cut you off. Ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was saying also since like in, on the MCC, how you can just switch back and forth between controller and mouse and keyboard like so quickly because right. usually mm -hmm. you have to like choose which one you want to play with. In well, most yeah, games. with like Modern Warfare, you have to. Um, I, I've played a lot. I think I don't know if Apex was. I've played a lot of games recently that allow you to switch on the fly. Like some games, I'll just I'll snipe only with the mouse, and then when I'm doing everything else, I'll go back to just switch the controller, have it right there in my lap waiting. Um, so of, I mean, there's that, mm -hmm. but um, if you want to maintain integrity, I guess is the best way to put it, and to um, you know, kind of reduce the number of people complaining about aim assist and things like that, then yeah, you would have to do input based matchmaking and lock people into whatever they want to choose controller, mouse, and keyboard. Yeah, so. I think if you had a controller just plugged in at all, you would have to count them as a controller player. Yeah, because yeah. can we, can you imagine that happening if like. Because you can tell, like, the UI recognizes whether or not you're a controller or keyboard mouse user. Can you imagine just, like, mm -hmm. being, like, mouse and keyboard searching up, and then as soon as the game starts, bring out your controller and start playing? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be extra cheesy. And you know people would yeah. do it, too, the rank up. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah. So, uh, that was... I think it's pretty much, like, the, the dev uh, update. For the update. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, other than that thing, yeah, like I said, the, the life of a bug stuff, it's really technical, very detailed oriented. Maybe a little, I would say maybe a little too much for what you're showing out to the public, as in just like it might be a little, a little too much extra information, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's just me. I'm glad that they're willing yeah. to talk about that stuff. Again, most dev companies, door date game companies, don't even bother with that at all. <laughs> yeah. So we're pretty fortunate as uh, Halo fans for that one. Uh, I think maybe next we can probably talk about the Halo Infinite art book that got announced. Yeah. Let's move over to that right there. So, as you can probably assume, with every Halo game, there's like a new art book or some kind of thing that gets added as like an external kind of reading material kind of stuff uh, with every game. And uh, it was recently just announced that the art of Halo Infinite was just announced on Amazon. Uh, it's actually a pretty decent price for a hardcover book, $30. Yep. Currently currently off, 26% off, so that's actually kind of a not too bad of a price, to be honest, compared to where, like, Halo 5's art book right now is actually pretty much the same price. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I think I might actually spring for this one. 
uh, just from what I've seen, just initially, from uh, the art of Halo Infinite, I'm like, I'm really liking it. Like from the toys that we've seen, the trailers that we've seen, uh, looking pretty dang awesome. Uh, because we have a little bit of a uh, like a blurb about the whole thing as well, uh, saying the legendary S Super Soldier returns in Halo Infinite 343 Industries and Microsoft are building the biggest and most visually spectacular game, Halo game yet. Halo Infinite de debuts on the Xbox family of consoles, which right there kind of lets you talk, you know, amongst yourselves about that. Also, just like they could just be referring to the old gen and new gen, but the rumor is that there is gonna That's be a what they are, but of course, yeah. the rumor is that there's gonna be a low end and a high end Xbox Series X, mm -hmm. uh, which I think we they were, I think it was a journal website reported that like a year ago, two years ago, or something like that, but yeah, yeah. Include, but that's that's definitely referring to Xbox One, mm -hmm. One S, One X, the Series X, and if the the Lockhart does come out, yeah, that's included under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basically it kind of goes in like showing you the the worlds and the art and just the universe of everything that's amazing with Halo Infinite, and uh, it's actually going to be produced by uh, Dark Horse, which has done plenty of previous uh, reading material for the Halo series as well. Uh, I think I have, yeah, I have a few other com yeah, I have a few other comics as well, like the Halo Escalation series, yeah, they do. Yeah, they and uh, they do comics, I think I, yeah. I think I have another comic over there as well from Dark Horse. Um, it's all good stuff. Like it's all really great. Really enjoy reading it, uh, and uh, definitely looking forward to it. I think I might snag myself a copy of this one. Might just have to, or since it'd be around that time in November, I might just, might just wait and be like, "Hey, I bought an awesome Christmas gift." <laughs> right. Yeah. That would be a perfect for a Christmas gift for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, so, Halo, the art of Halo Infinite also features brand new cover from legendary legendary concept artist and Halo Infinite's art director Sparth, as well added on there as a, another description. It does say uh, release date being December 29th. I highly doubt that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a placeholder. Yeah, date. definitely just a placeholder. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. You can pre-order it now if you want. Again, like for thirty dollars, if you so choose. So, but that option's out there for you guys if you if you want to. Do you think you'll be picking this one up, Pat? Possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really big on the art stuff. Um, I've been. I think I'm. Or I ordered the story of Halo, like the mythos of Halo. I ordered that book recently. Um, probably get the encyclopedia. We'll see. We'll see if it's uh. I don't know. Maybe get the strategy guide instead, or something, something cool like that. I don't know. We'll see. Are sure? Definitely on my radar. I are, put that. Are strategy guides even like really like a thing anymore? Oh yeah. Yeah. I just bought one when Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah, I bought a hardcover collector's edition version of the uh, strategy guide. Oh okay. Yeah. It's like because uh, like, I, I remember the strategy guides being like legitimate, like strategy guides of how to like play through levels and stuff like that. Kind mm -hmm. of almost like a little like a little. Halo Five had a Cheating cool manual, one too, a strategy guide, but like uh, it came with like Rex, like Rex and stuff too that you could uh, like a pre the Prima emblem and all that. I think came with that. Wow, pay to win! I, I see. Done by Prima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I totally play Warzone. <laughs> but yeah, so but yeah, cool. Looking forward to that. My doubt, I probably will be picking that up because I always like looking through that kind of stuff. Um, so beyond Halo Infinite awesomeness, which we played. We'll be having coming out in July next month, guys. We'll be having some Halo Infinite reveal awesomeness. Super excited about that. Oh my god, can't wait. <laughs> uh, though, in the meantime, though, MCC is still relevant, and we had the, our first pro tournament for the MCC Pro Series just happened over the weekend. So I thought that we kind of share some results over that and kind of how the production of it went, how the gameplay of it, whole thing went, and you know, how, did, how did it go? Did it play well? Did it play? Did it have long delays like the last event did? <laughs> um, but this one actually ran rather smoothly. Like I think for the like the the obstacles that three four three had to overcome to try to you know make a production out of this and like put it on their Twitch channel, which has been dormant for a long time, and uh, make it feel like you're watching like a regular tournament, like you would see like in person. I think they did an amazing job. Uh, doing the production on this thing like they were basically just hopping between the point of views of different 
you know, people playing in the game who were streaming at the time. And I think most of them were pretty much obligated to stream, or at least most of them did stream. And so uh, if they weren't hopping back and forth between points of view as much as they normally would, but you still got at least a dis decent point of view of like what the guys were talking about. And cool, plus it was cool to have uh, Unishek, Tashi, and uh, Clutch were doing the commentating for it as well through, uh, throughout the whole thing, which is pretty great to see. And uh, Matt Klein, who was like the production lead for the HCS team, I think nailed it out of the park. Like I didn't feel like I was watching a nerfed version of the tournament. I felt like I was watching like what you would normally see if you're watching from Twitch. Like it was, did a great job. Audio levels were great. And uh, I think it did an awesome job. I would probably suggest maybe to, if, if they could to the players, maybe to turn off their notifications when like new follows or donations happen. Because... Can you, you can imagine if like if, huh. if there were some more people huh. watching, what? No, it's just <laughs> you. You telling people to turn off their alerts? I just find that really funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, when you're you, when it's when you get paid for doing that, you would think you could take into consideration. No, I'm just kidding, but uh, uh, just in case, like you got trolls and stuff like that. Obviously, if there was more viewership, you definitely would have like bit donation trolls going like you know XX four twenty my suck my whatever you know 69 donated 500 bits and you see that flash on your screen you know it can be a little distracting for to the production of the the stream mm. but luckily we didn't see that of course i think average viewership was like around two one one and a half thousand two thousand people so it wasn't like a crazy viewership as we normally get uh right. usually usually about like for finals we get like around like what ten thousand ish fifteen thousand maybe yeah something like that i can't remember exact numbers uh but like ran super well and so i just kind of wanted to go over some of the uh the brackets that were uh for the uh first halo pro series tournament here guys uh so we have a so basically these were the uh top eight teams that uh were playing here i believe four of them were from uh hcs anaheim which was the last pro series event and uh, a few of them had to kind of work their way in. Uh, so uh, we had like, pretty much all the predicted teams won, really. Uh, all the uh, pre-established teams for the previous one, like Inconceivable, which was which was former Mantra, that won the last event, you know, made it to the uh, semifinals, but actually lost the Pride, which was the previous Unlimited team, if I remember correctly. No, they were the... Oh, no, this was, no, this was a team that uh, I think... Were correctly, Ryan Noob saying no, they were in the last tournament as well. I can't remember what team name they went under previously. But all the previous pro teams made it into the final series, uh, coming down to Pride, which was uh, King Nick, Rain, Saiyan, and Ryan Noob versus Sentinels in the finals, which was Lethal, APG, Royal 2, Snakebite. And it was a pretty fun series to watch. Um, actually, Pride took walked away with the first game in the finals. But then Sentinels, aka Tox, were like, okay, you, we're done with having your fun. We're, we're playing with our food pretty much on that one. And uh, they ended up taking up the right, next three games for the win on that one. And, uh, you know, Sentinels basically reclaiming their throne as the best Halo team in the biz, as they've pretty much been since, oh gosh, since ever? I know, since they were uh, back on the Optics team. You know, they've always basically finished first or second the whole time, really. Mm -hmm. So, big ups to them. Really glad to see how well that uh, production turned out. And uh, we have a new amateur series coming up this weekend. And uh, we'll see which teams kind of walk away with that one. Again, it's all going to be a Halo 2 anniversary, I think, for a while. Uh, so I think they are willing to kind of look into maybe mixing things up, especially when Halo 3 comes out. I think things are currently planned out to the um the end of uh, the, the beginning half of july i think there's me doing h2a and i think after fourth of july they might be kind of probably hopping over to halo 3 and then you know probably after that just halo infinite you know no they'll just do halo 4 after that pretty much i think that's what's going to happen <laughs> but uh yeah super glad to see that how well that turned out and uh looking forward to the future tournaments man I'm I'm excited. I'm glad to see this many this many people jumping on and playing some competitive Halo. That's good. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to watch it at all, Pat? 
No. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Hey, okay, well, you're going to start caring once Halo Infinite comes out, and then yeah, probably we're so. going to have teams yeah, coming yeah. out. Like, these are going to be the teams you're going to start worrying about, watching out for these players you got to keep in mind. Exactly. When Halo Infinite comes around, we're going to have to still do these I online do know tournaments. I King Nick is. Yeah, he's I a streamer. I that name. Yeah, he's a streamer. I, uh, I faced him when they did the Halo 5 tournament, like uh, Mixer mashup or whatever. If just he, he destroyed me. He's a fucking... He's frustrating to play against. Yeah, he's a really good player. <laughs> what, what was that Mixer Master Up thing again? Was it like how many kills you get or something like that? Yeah, he was he was just straight up climbing the leaderboard so quick. I, I, it's a long story. I ain't gonna get into it. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah like I never like you and Jimbo, right? Or Rap Scallion, was it? No, this is before I even met those guys. Or okay. you, really. Or before we even started talking. It was just maybe a month before we started talking to each other. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I just went in it solo and just tried. Yeah, yeah that was a grind. And then, then I realized, yeah, then I realized you had to play League of Legends as well. Because I was trying to win the tickets to E3. I really want to go to E3 that mm-hmm. year. I ended up winning tickets anyways from a different uh, contest. But I was really trying to, you know, get on that grind to do that. But then I realized you had to play League and stuff. And I was like, oh, never mind. I give up. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, but that, I think that's what, honestly, what Mixer should be doing, you know? Instead of yeah. spending, dropping millions of dollars on these contracts trying to get these big name streamers, you need, to, you need to start from the foundation up, man. You can't just be, you know, picking from the top. You can't be cherry picking. Mm-hmm. You got you got to grow the tree before you start, you know, picking the apples. Hey, I mean, having people like Ninja and stuff, maybe that's their way of looking at growing the tree. Getting right. people to recognize Mixer, you know? Yeah, but I, I, thought, I thought that was a great idea. Uh, maybe they just didn't see that much growth from it, you know, in the first tra- yeah, attempt of it. I think that would be a great way to get people to jump on Mixer and, and stream on that platform. It's just because, mm-hmm. or just, just get them on it, make them use it. And they may be like, well, actually, mm-hmm. it's not that bad. I like it, you know? Right. I think even after signing all these big name guys, I think Mixer still has like maybe like 2% of like online streaming viewership for gaming, where Twitch is like 90% or something like that. I can't remember the exact statistics. I've heard something about that, but yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, Microsoft's trying real hard not to have Mixer be the next Zoom <laughs> or Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zoom was cool. Don't trash Zoom. They had no. They had. I remember Zoom Z- HD was dope. I remember dude. Zoom had like a really cool share feature where you can like send each other like a song, but then yeah. like it would delete itself after like three days or something like that. Yeah. I was like, that's the one thing you had over them, and you, you hand, you kneecapped it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That's why. Well, they even now, but that, nowadays, the, uh, well, no one even really has an iPod anymore. Really, everyone just uses their phones, yeah, streams from there. Their phones, yeah. Yeah, I um, loved my iPod so back in the day. My only Apple product I actually liked. The, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, same. The only Apple product everyone was an iPod Touch. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's move on to the playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrap this, wrap this crap up. <laughs> uh, so uh, we got Yip Yap, the Destroyer. His playlist is back on MCC right now. The Yappening. Um, that is going on, I guess, now until June 10th. Mm. So it's on fun. MCC, yeah, it's it's fun. I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's some of it's bad. I can't remember what what I played. I think it was a it was brute shots, unlimited bottomless clip brute shots on like elongation or something. It was just fucking awful. I find it I fun, like, dude. I'd rather play. <laughs> I'd rather play Castle Wars than that. Uh, wow, that's really? That's some, something. That's, that's some strong yeah. words from Pat on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, that ends on June 10th. Um, it was actually supposed to be Sniper, Shoddy Snipes coming in on June 3rd, but I guess that got pushed back. So that's probably what's going to be coming in after uh, the happening. But you can earn yourself two nameplates right now. Uh, if you kill 150 grunts with headshots in campaign, firefight, or Spartan Ops, you get the Shut Your Yap nameplate, which I just got. And then the Yap Yap the Destroyer nameplate. Uh, you have to complete seven matches in the category for the uh, Yappening game category in the social mm-hmm. custom bro- or uh, social browser there uh, under under MCC. You'll see it at the end. It'll have a little grunt emblem. You find seven matches, complete them. You don't got to win them, and then you'll earn yourself that nameplate too. You don't get the nameplates right away. They do it on a weekly basis, so just remember that. They press a button to verify who's done the criteria, and then you get it. So uh, give it time to see if you guys uh, don't if you don't get it right away, don't panic. 
uh, yeah. looking at you, Jimbo. <laughs> Jimbo's panicking. He's like, how did you get it? And I didn't get it. We did it at the same time. I'm like, dude, just, just chill. chill. Yeah. yeah. But wait, like, wait another week, and then I got your back in case they they don't give it to you. And also, just keep in mind these are the, the same name plays that they were giving out last Yapping, which was a year ago, I yeah. believe. I think yeah. it was almost a year ago. At this, a little bit over a year ago. I think it was back in April of last year that they did this. Uh, so if you mm-hmm. already got those name plays last year, you don't have to worry you about don't it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it was really great. Um, uh, some ba- rebalancing on maps and game modes as well for Halo Two yeah. Classic, which I think is huge. You want to go over those, Pat? Yeah, sure. So Halo 2 Classic playlist changes uh, were implemented on Wednesday. So they adjusted the weighting of 4v4 to make Lockout, Midship, and Sanctuary more common. Three great maps, no problem with that. Make Foundation, Backwash, and Desolation, and Tombstone less common. Four not-so-great maps. Cool with that. Adjusted weighting to AV8 to make uh, map weightings more evenly distributed. So the big team, you should get a uh, more even selection of maps. They removed Ascension from 4v4 Auto Slayer, which, if you play <laughs> Auto Slayer, may God have mercy on your soul. And removed Zanzibar from 4v4 Flag and Bomb. So, yeah, all interesting stuff. I say all that's for the good. Yeah, I was playing a little bit of the 4v4 and Halo 2 Classic now that it actually works. And uh, definitely was getting much better map rotations in that one for sure. Mm-hmm. So like I, I mean I, I like Foundation I like Backwash Desolation Tombstone you know I like them um, they're okay but definitely like Lockout Mission Sanctuary like those are the Halo Two maps right there yes you want to play those you know so glad to see that change um, coming have in. you uh, quick question before I move on to Halo Five uh, playlist have you played Terminal at all I missed that um, map on Halo Two. The one with the train on it? Yeah, yeah, I remember Terminal. Uh, I haven't really played a whole lot. Of course, I haven't really played a whole lot of classic BTB. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm playing BTB, I mainly get uh, back, not Backwash, but uh, Waterworks. I get that one a lot. Yeah, you get Waterworks a lot. You'll get Coag. Um, I don't like, yeah, feel I like I get Coag that often. I want more of it. I mean, you'll get it. But, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I, I wish, it, honestly it I wish there was like a blood gulch and all its variation 24 7 playlist and i'd be very yeah, happy like with that town, yeah exactly but like yeah. all the variations yeah, of cool. blood gulch like that would be awesome i guarantee you that'd be yep. way more played than shoddy snipes <laughs> probably yeah so uh you want to move over um, to the halo 5 or you have something else yeah halo 5 no uh june 4th which is today as of the recording of this podcast or the stream of this podcast the 2020 arena season began on halo 5 <laughs> Uh, Free for All has rotated into ranked as well, and Castle Wars. Your favorite has rotated in. Yeah, I play that <laughs> over fucking yapping. Um, yeah, so those are those are rotated in. We'll update you guys next week on what's going on on the playlist. Um, but yeah, I guess solid stuff, for, especially arena season starting. So that's cool. Hmm. Actually, a fun thing I realized, uh, I watched a Mint Blitz clip on this, we tried doing this the other night, or on Gemini, you play, uh, in the Yapanese, you play like this one ball variation where basically, like, you can't really die, I mean, like, you can, but it takes a lot of, like, rocket shots, and then, like, the physics are just, like, through the roof or whatever, so basically if you get shot, you get flung across the map kind of stuff, just fun stuff like that. Um, Yeah, we were playing that on, um lockout yeah i mean we got gemini and it found out like if you grab the ball and you run to the outside balcony and then you throw a plasma grenade down pick up the ball jump and then the, let the grenade explode it'll just fling you to like the top of the map like out of the map to the top where like you can't get shot from or anything like that you just hide up there the entire time just completely breaking the game mode but i think that's just kind of like the aspect of like yapping modes where it's just like Let's just break the game and have some stupid fun, you know? <laughs> right. And I think that's kind of like the whole appeal of, the whole, of that playlist as a whole. But uh, those are the plays you guys can look forward to when it comes to uh, all the good stuff coming in, in Halo. I saw a lot of people on Twitter being really excited about FFA coming back to Halo 5, like Pixel yeah. Pete, uh, Lady Echidna. Vetoed, the, probably. Vetoed is probably as well, yeah. Big FFA fans over there. I'm not a huge fan of yeah. FFA, but, you know, I, I like it. It's fun. I think that's the closest I ever got to grinding at the Onyx. I was like, I was like this close to Onyx and free for all, and I just couldn't quite get it. Now I'm so out of practice. I'm yeah, like, I don't even think I've played five matches of FFA on Halo what? Five. Halo Five free for all is fun. Yeah, n- never played FFA much. 
Mm. Well, that's uh, it. Could be a little tricky because, especially at the beginning, when like it really depends on what your spawn is at the start. If you spawn next to like a rocket launcher, you're like, all right, we're gonna have a good start. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Anyways, though, I guess that kind of might bring us towards the end of the show here. Um, Pat, you have uh, other outlets to connect with people online. What sure might do. those uh, said outlets be? Well, said outlets might be Twitter. You can find me at the Patman Gaming. You can find me on YouTube. Type in Patman Gaming on your YouTube search bar. Should pop right up. If I don't, there's a problem. <laughs> and uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Patman Gaming. Almost to 500 follows, so we're excited about that. Woo! We passed 2K on YouTube, so very excited about that. And um, Instagram, you can follow me on there too at the Patman Gaming on Instagram. And uh, that's about it. Kevin, where can people find you? As always, you can find me at Kevin Coolex Halo on Twitter, Kevin Coolex on Instagram, on Facebook on youtube um i feel like i'm i also can just catch this podcast in general you can catch on spotify and podbean if you want to listen into the podcast without any worry of losing draining your phone battery on youtube check us out on those platforms you get to listen in your car you can you know just not have to waste your entire phone battery which is like a huge plus uh our buddy rep scan likes to listen on spotify i know for sure so you guys can check us out there. Links to everything that we just mentioned is going to be in the description of this video on Podbean as well and also on Spotify for listening there. If you want to check us out on all our other platforms. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to end this for the show. Uh, if anyone in the live stream going to want to chill out, we can do some Q&A afterwards and we'll do some more streaming, some game streaming after that as well. And uh, for the podcast, uh, Pat, why don't you close us out? What do I do with my hands? 